you're doing all of this for television and sharing all of this on TV, <laughs> don't share it with my family members. <laughs> It's just so wild to me. It's okay with you sharing all of this with the world, but your family, they can't know about it. <laughs> it's just so crazy. Hey guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl JD here back with another video so today I have a feeling it's probably gonna be a lengthy one because we are gonna be talking about season 12 of married at first sight so I know they're probably on like season 14 I think at this point I think correct me if I'm wrong so this is an older season but I like looking back at things especially when there is a lot to talk about okay we are going to be actually taking a look at the couple chris and paige from season 12. so i did watch season 12 in its entirety i watched all the couples the ones that failed the ones that pretty much made it to the end decided to stay married obviously you could still decide after deciding to stay married at the end of the whole experiment you could still choose to divorce but i think overall there was only two couples or three was it three couples to stay together i don't even know anyways the success rate on these shows are pretty dang low okay i'm, <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about the percentage because personally i feel as though when it comes to the whole married at first sight thing and also when it comes to like love is blind i feel like they almost try to make something happen that might not really be there because obviously they're trying to get you to connect with people on a level deeper than just visual but you obviously do have some people like chris <clears throat> in this situation <laughs> that can't really get past the not being attracted physically type of thing so <laughs> you know we're pretty much just going to be tackling chris and paige in this video because because I feel like Chris was definitely one of the most toxic men I have seen on these shows in a hot minute. Obviously when it comes to Love is Blind, I've seen quite a lot of craziness. We talked about that show here on the channel as well, 90 Day Fiance, that has its own dysfunction going on. I'm also going to be talking about the uh, Tell All. Yeah, it's, it's like four parts. So we're gonna be making a video for each individual tell-all. Trust me you, okay? Because 90 Day Fiance, this season of Happily Ever After has been insane, okay? So we're gonna have to make separate videos for each part of the tell-all. So keep an eye out for that. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. We're talking about Married at First Sight, and we're talking about Chris and Paige. But more specifically, we are gonna be talking about Chris, okay? So Chris in this situation, He's 27, Paige is 25. So if you guys don't know the gist of married at first sight, basically you decide, okay, I wanna get married, I wanna be connected to someone on a deeper level, and you send your application, I guess, to the married at first sight people, or a team, whatever, and they have their, what do you call them? Their matchmakers, I guess? They have them basically match you up with somebody, and then after that, I think they tell you that you have a match, and then shortly after you end up being sent to the altar to marry this person that you never met. So you're pretty much marrying them at first sight. The first time you see them is when you're getting married at the altar. Yeah, so very different from Love is Blind, where it's pretty much like you don't really get to see them when you're dating or getting to know the person, but then after you propose to them, you finally get to see them, and then during that time, you get to obviously interact with them, be with them physically, and figure out like, do I actually wanna get married to you? So you decide if Love is Blind, which I've said many times over, I do not think Love is Blind. I think that that's just something people tell themselves to make themselves feel better about dating. <laughs> I feel like you definitely have to be physically attracted to your partner. Obviously, I feel like that's a little bit more surface level than obviously the deeper things. You do want to be compatible on the deeper levels of things, but me personally, I have to say, yeah, you do have to have some amount of physical attraction to your partner. But moving on to Married at First Sight, I gave you guys the premise of the show. Very different from Love is Blind, as you can see. But, you know, Chris and Paige, they get matched up on the Married at First Sight season 12. The 
first thing I noticed, red flag number one, is when Chris and Paige are married and he's talking to Paige's friends, aka her bridesmaids in this situation. So he's pretty much telling her friends now, straight up, like, she, Paige, is not really the type of woman that I would usually go for or date. Okay, so in essence, he's pretty much telling her friends, who is obviously going to go back and tell her, hey, I'm not really interested in her in terms of like physically. I don't feel like the physical attraction is there. So it's kind of similar to in Love is Blind season three. Y'all could definitely check that out over on my channel. I'll link it in the corner here. But in season three, I don't know if you guys remember, but Colleen and Cole, they were basically chatting it up at the pool and Cole's just like, hey, I'm with Zina, but really and truly, if we weren't together, you know, you, aka Colleen, Colleen would be more his type. And of course they got in trouble for saying that. So that's similar to what happened there, okay? So basically Chris in this situation is just telling her friends straight up like, yeah, she's not usually who I go for, but you know, we could make a shake pretty much we, we can make it work we will try to work past it really quickly i just want to read the write-up that i saw this is from my lifetime.com i think that's the network that it comes on right lifetime correct me if i'm wrong anyways so it says page 25 is determined to break the generational curse in her family and be the first to have a successful marriage when she was only 22 years old she purchased her own house she's stable in her career and is ready to start the next chapter in her life and be a wife she wants to be married at first sight because she truly believes in the process and trusts in the experts to find her the right man so child based on what i'm going to talk about in this video they did not find her the right one so they might need to get some new matchmakers because clearly i don't think they knew what they was doing in this situation but moving on chris 27 has dreamed about getting married from a young age raised by pastors his faith runs deep and he firmly believes in the power of prayer he knows god will bring him his wife and he's confident married at first sight is a sign of answered prayers alongside his wife he wants to be co-CEOs leaving behind a legacy for the many children he hopes to have. So yes, that, that part is true. He definitely was raised by pastors. He grew up in the church, he said, very supposedly religious. And also when it came to Paige, she was also very religious as well. So she was very determined to break the whole generational curse thing, like they said. And she had put a lot of pressure on herself, I feel, over the course of the season to stick by Chris because she didn't want to have a failed marriage like her other family members. So if you guys don't believe this married at first sight thing, they're actually getting married. No, no, they really are actually getting married. They file a marriage license and all. And you have to actually get a real divorce to get divorced from this person. This is not just for the show, honey. Nay, nay. <laughs> this is not just for the show. They are actually married. So I just want to clarify that. It's wild. So obviously we see both Paige and Chris when it comes to financials. They seem both pretty sturdy, you know? So I didn't think that they were gonna be coming into this relationship kind of broken, obviously, when it came to that part. Now, I personally think that when it came to the whole religious thing, it was kind of why Paige tried so hard to hold on to something that wasn't there. But we're, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it, okay? So, like I said in the beginning, from the wedding, it was already a red flag because he said he wasn't really interested in Paige like that. But then we get to the honeymoon. They go to Vegas. They meet all the rest of the couples. And obviously the rest of the couples, they're, they're chilling. They're enjoying their time together. They're pretty much just kind of slowly building up to kind of consummating the marriage, you know? But when it came to Chris and Paige now, we find out that from the first time they even were together in the hotel room in Vegas, they were already getting down to business honey the physical clearly in that sense was not that serious at least to Chris but then again over on my main channel we have seen many many instances of men sleeping with women that they weren't really physically attracted to but they just wanted to kind of bust a you know what <laughs> like they didn't really actually care how the woman looked like it was just a matter of getting their needs met in that moment you can't really necessarily feel special it's more like a listen you were around you were just there so i made use of you that type of thing i know it sounds bad 
but it kind of is what it is. And I feel like that's kind of what it was in this situation. And we end up finding out even after they kind of consummated their marriage a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately they, they told us all of that a couple of times. So shortly after we find out all this information, Chris and Paige, they have this conversation in the hotel room because Chris is having kind of like this I wouldn't say come to Jesus moment, but he's having this moment in his mind, I guess, where he kind of breaks down a little bit and he feels as though he got married to the wrong person. The matchmakers didn't know what they were doing. They matched him with someone he wasn't attracted to physically. So everything was just all wrong and it was all coming crashing down in his mind. So he's having this little mini breakdown, doesn't want to really talk to Paige like that or discuss anything. So now finally they get back to basically the parents and Chris, of course, meets up with Paige's peoples and vice versa, Paige meets with Chris's peoples. So when Paige meets up with Chris's family, she, I feel, exposed a little bit too much. She was basically talking about how he slept with her numerous times, but he wasn't really physically attracted to her. So she felt like she was getting played because she didn't understand how you could do that. But then, like I said, with men, it's very different from us ladies. With us women, I feel like we definitely need to be attracted to you in order to sleep with you. But with men, it's more like a convenience thing sometimes. It's just, it's not really a matter of them being attracted to you. So yeah, but anyways, so she definitely, I felt exposed a little bit too much of that relationship to his family members and the family members end up going back to Chris with that information. And they're just like, why are you gonna be playing this young lady like that? And it's just, ooh, it, mm. from there, it just goes downhill. And Chris comes to Paige and he's just like, listen, you need to stop sharing so much our information with my family members. Even though we're doing all of this for television and sharing all of this on TV, <laughs> don't share it with my family members. <laughs> It's just so wild to me. It's okay with you sharing all of this with the world, but your family, they can't know about it. <laughs> it's just so crazy. But anyways, moving on, right? So it's downhill from there. And we get a huge bombshell just a couple of weeks later. Chris, again, does not want to share this information with the world on television. So he takes Paige into the bathroom and he pretty much tells her, hey, I'm expecting a child now with my ex-girlfriend that we find out, okay, he was sleeping with just a few weeks before he decided to marry Paige. Oh, y'all. Oh my God. In that moment, I was like, Paige, please leave for the love of God. Please leave this man. But like I said, from the beginning, we understand why, because obviously when it comes to the pressure that uh, Paige was putting on herself, when it came to her family history, generational curses, trying to break them, and then also her religious beliefs about marriage, all that kind of tied in and pushed her even closer to Chris. Believe it or not, it pushed her closer to Chris and made her want to work things out even after she realized there's probably not gonna be no working it out. Because Chris, after all this, is just like, nah, I don't want no random man raising my child, so I'm gonna have to leave this marriage. I feel like me and my ex-girlfriend are gonna have to work it out. <sighs> Y'all, I, I was just like, what? What in the hell is going on? What What is happening? I'm very confused. Also Paige, I think she knew exactly what was happening. She wasn't confused, but at the same time, I think she just, again, was putting too much pressure on herself to stay and stick it out through all the BS. And I was like, girl, you did not sign up for this though. Come on, you, you did not sign up for this. One other thing I forgot to mention in Vegas that happened during the honeymoon when all the couples were kind of, you know, connecting with each other. I think three of the couples went to do one activity and then the other couples, the other two couples, they went to do something else. And I remember two of the ladies from those couples, they came to Paige when the guys were kind of off by themselves and they were like, listen, we know that this is a lot of craziness that's going on and you don't deserve this. And I, I wholeheartedly agreed with those ladies coming to her and pretty much 
trying to shake some sense into her, but I don't feel like it was working because Paige had to shake some sense into herself ultimately, you know? But the thing is, they came to her, said that, and they were like, yeah, if you need anything from us, anything at all, let us know, we're here to support you. And in that moment, Chris comes in and he just hears or overhears what their conversation was about. And he feels as though you shouldn't be talking to my wife about me. I feel like you should leave our personal business out of your mouth, stuff like that, right? And it was just like, how is this personal business again when you guys are all on a television show together, Chris? Make it make sense please he ends up going pretty much at it having a full-blown argument with these two women Paige just sitting there trying to figure out what to do because she's just like how do i make this stop like this is embarrassing especially with my husband arguing with two women and then on top of that the husband i think actually one of the husbands weren't there because i don't remember seeing him but anyway so one of the husbands of the two wives that chris was arguing with he comes in, he's just like, what is going on? Like, I'm gonna need you to stop talking to my wife that way. And eventually Chris starts going at it with the husband. And I'm like, Chris, you look childish as hell right now. I, I know if my man was around and there was another guy arguing with me, acting crazy, yeah, it, it would have been done so. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I know if I wasn't the one that was leading that argument and the one that ultimately started it, yeah. Um. I'm gonna need you to fix that. Like, you you got some issues, you know what I'm saying? And I would expect my boyfriend or husband in this situation to definitely come to bat for me because you're not gonna argue with me as a grown man. <laughs> like, what? Anyways, so that was just rather wild to me. But what I find even crazier though is that one of the wives' husbands, they were basically saying, oh, you need to watch what you say. Not, not even trying to approach Chris about how he acted, but just talking to the wife and saying, oh, you need to make sure that you're not saying things out of pocket and stuff like that. But doesn't ever go to Chris and say what you did was also wrong. Acting mad aggressive towards her too, mind you. But that's just, that's okay. The problem is the woman. Okay, but anyway, moving on. So they go to dinner and basically Chris was trying to apologize to all the couples, mainly the couples that were there on that little retreat or whatever that they were on. And one of the couples weren't there, okay? And he comes in not knowing that he came in the middle of Chris trying to apologize to everybody. And he's just like, listen, man, Chris, I'm gonna need you to know that what you did earlier today or yesterday, whatever that was, I'm gonna need you to know what you said and how you was acting towards my wife is uncalled for and I'm gonna need you to never do that again. Basically, in essence, that's what he's saying. And I was like, how it to you? Stood up for your wife, unlike that other husband. But anyway, <laughs> Chris, basically from then on, is just agitated. I'm trying to figure out how you gonna be apologizing to one of the couples, not both. Like, how are you not waiting until both of the couples that you're trying to apologize to are present to talk to them? Anyways. And then you're gonna get mad when they don't even know you're apologizing. You're in the middle of your apology speech. Eventually, you know, like I said, Chris is getting agitated. He has a very short fuse, very short fuse. And I think that's a red flag in itself. Personality flaw, sure, but definitely something that he needs to work on because that's not something that I want in a partner even. So when it comes to you in a marriage, it's definitely not something that you would want in a partner for sure is a short fuse okay if they don't know how to control themselves when they reach the end of that fuse yeah i'm mm, you need someone else flat out i'm sorry anyways so Paige again is left embarrassed because chris is getting agitated starts arguing with everybody well more specifically the couple like i said the guy who had spoken to him he starts arguing with him he gets up wants to fight him pretty much and the guy's just like, what are you doing? Pretty much another husband had to hold him back and be like, my guy, cool down. So that was that was crazy. But you know, it pretty much was a foreshadowing of what was to come, which was more craziness, okay? So after this, after Paige again finds out that number one, he's expecting a kid, number two, he's not physically attracted to her, number three, He's out here fighting people, arguing with women. Like, it's just, it's not a good look. It's so many red flags and she's still sticking with this man. She's still in her head saying, I'ma stick beside him. 
Why? Why, Chica? Like I said again, I think so many pressures, I think, was trying to force her to stick things out. And it was like, sis, please, please leave, right? She still sticks besides this man. They are supposed to move in together after the honeymoon. They're supposed to pretty much be living with each other, getting to know each other more. And pretty much by this point, Chris is just detached because he's trying to figure out what's going to go on with his baby mama. But we end up finding out, unfortunately, that his girlfriend does end up losing the baby, but not before he buys her a brand new car. Paige even got to meet the ex-girlfriend at one point, and she was just like kind of done with the situation at that point. But before that happened, okay, like I said, he bought her a new car, the ex-girlfriend, bought her a new car, is trying to work out their relationship, trying to move in together. And during all of this, Paige is just left in their apartment together by herself the entire time. And she, at the end of it, is just packing up her stuff and she's just like, you know what? I think I'm done. And what's crazy is that at the end of this, they're supposed to have a meetup with the matchmakers to decide if they want to stay married or if they ultimately want to get a divorce, right? And Paige and Chris walk into this meeting and the matchmakers are just ripping Chris to shreds, rightfully so, because there was so much going on, so much back and forth, so much toxicity, so much. Mainly on Chris's part because I feel like Paige ultimately was just there trying to be as supportive as possible through all the BS. And she didn't sign up for that ultimately, you know? But what's crazy is that there was one more moment when Chris and Paige had met up because Chris decided, oh, now I kind of want to work it out with Paige. I don't want to work it out with my ex-girlfriend anymore because I feel like since she doesn't have the kid anymore, you know, I want to work it out with Paige. I want to work this marriage out. And it was like, what? What is happening? What is happening? Please do explain. And this entire time, Paige is trying to get advice from Chris's like spiritual advisor or friend or whatever you want to call it. I think he's a pastor. And she's trying to figure out like what she should do, get advice from him about how to deal with Chris. And Chris doesn't like that after he finds out that his friend or advisor had been talking to Paige, you know, giving her advice about the whole situation. And ultimately, I think he had also said that, you know, Paige, like you should leave Chris. Okay, <laughs> alongside uh, Paige's own family members and friends telling her to leave as well, but she just decided to stick it out regardless. So back and forth, I'm going back and forth, right? But either way, they had met up one more time before they decided if they were gonna go their separate ways or not, right? And I remember they were doing kind of like this game night, they had food and Something comes up and I think Chris is emotional little self because he can't handle much. Like I said, he has a short fuse, okay? So he starts getting agitated with Paige. I can't remember what she said to get him to that point. But either way, he starts getting agitated. And he's just like, well, I was expecting a wife that would support me. I feel like you should be there with me no matter what. And in that moment, I was like, oh my God, this man is delusional. Like, he is delusional. He is so toxic that he now thinks that what he is going through is normal. That Paige, his partner, signed up for that mess. And that he, she basically should be that wife that sticks it out through thick and thin. And it's, it's just manipulative, really, is what it is. It's manipulative as hell, toxic, the most toxic partner I have seen on a reality television show like this besides Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance but we're gonna get into him later but oh my god this man manipulative as hell and I hate the fact that he knows that Paige is religious so he just uses their religion their shared faith really to kind of manipulate Paige and to stick him beside him really it's so aggravating throughout the entire show. But anyway, they make it to the point where they're deciding if they want to stay together, stay married, or get divorced, right? And in the end, Chris, he looks at the matchmakers and it's just like, you know what? I think I want to stay with her. I think I want to stick it out and we can make it work. All the matchmakers are looking at him like, this dude is not serious. He can't be serious. Like, can't be. But no, he really was. He really was serious. And then Paige looks at him like, what? Like she is genuinely confused. There was genuine confusion on her face, okay? She looks at him 
and I believe in that moment she kind of walks away. I think he walks away too. I can't remember what exactly happened, but I remember Chris, I think I walked away. He went to his car. I don't remember the sequence of events entirely, but he went to his car and then Paige followed him and they have a chat in the car and then she gets Chris to come back, I think. Or maybe she doesn't. I don't know. Either way, Paige comes back. I know that much. She comes back. She tells the matchmakers, you know what? I'm done with this. And I'm like, thank you, God, because you deserve so much more. Like, come on, sis. I just felt like it was almost like a lack of confidence and then also how she was more susceptible to being manipulated. And then also number three, how she kind of let herself be manipulated because she felt as though she should be in this marriage and that God had led her to this marriage and that God was telling her, you need to stick it out. It was so aggravating, y'all. This whole thing, I was like, this man already told you from the jump he wasn't attracted to you. Y'all was still sleeping together. There was, oh, they were actually having unprotected sex, y'all. Unprotected. There was a possibility that she was pregnant. But thankfully, she ended up getting her period, so she was good. But oh my god. I'm like, Paige, if you know all of this is happening, why would you do that? <laughs> I was like so confused. I'm like, ma'am, were you trying to get knocked up by this dude? I just, I was very confused with everything that was going on. It was so chaotic, but obviously it made for good television. But I honestly was just very happy with the fact that she ended up walking away in the end because she was trying so hard this entire season. God bless her soul for trying to stick it out. But oh my God, some things are just meant to be left in the past, left alone and never touched again. Never re-examined, never looked back on with fondness. Just let it go, let it go. This was one of those things. But y'all, you know, if y'all watched that season and y'all feel the same way as I do, let me know in the comments. But I just felt like Chris was probably the most toxic man I have ever seen, besides Big Ed again on 90 Day Fiance. But one of the most toxic people I have seen, at least more specifically men, because usually it's a woman. I'm not even gonna lie, usually it's the woman in these cases. But in this instance, it was wholeheartedly him. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie, it was, it was him. But those are my thoughts on the matter. Y'all can let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know your feelings, cause ooh child, it was a roller coaster. But I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.